your Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter number 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody say it's good to pray. I was mad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The Bible said to serve the Lord with gladness. Aren't you glad to serve the Lord? Aren't you glad to sing praises unto his name? Amen. Somebody said I was glad when they said unto me. And let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We greet you in the name of Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. And as it is always our intention to honor the Lord and worship Him with our mouth and with our sound and with our words and with everything, we just want to honor the Lord. So we thank God for those who come in this morning. The book of Genesis, chapter number three. Genesis, chapter number three, and verse. Uh, I can see I get to this morning. Verse number fifteen. Genesis chapter three and verse number fifteen. And last week, if you've been following us, we were talking about uh, how in the beginning the tempter uh, Satan came in the form of a serpent to uh, attempt and to test and to overthrow, uh, uh, to get, to get uh, Adam and Eve to deviate from the word of the Lord. God had given Adam the instructions. God had given him the word. And so Satan came in the very area where they will see, 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 this is why you will not be discouraged or, 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 or allow yourself to, to sink uh, in depression when God gives a word and then there's this temptation in that area. What I mean by temptation is a trial or, or, or a test or in that certain area. God just spoke the word. God just gave me the word. It seems like I'm being hammered in my thought life about the same thing that God just said that he wanted to do for me. Has God ever given you a word and you have to ponder and you have to think and you have to wonder and you almost have to imagine how was that word going to come to pass? Have you ever, is that, have you ever been there before? Yeah. But see, it, it's not so much uh, about, see, what, what Satan wants to do, he wants to get you to meditate so strong on what he's trying to project into your, your mind that, that eventually it can gravitate to your heart and then it'll start coming out of your mouth. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. So in, in the beginning, uh, uh, here uh, in the book of Genesis, God had given man, somebody said God had given man the authority. God had given man. And we've been debunking the ideology that God is in control of everything. That's a religious cliche. Yeah. God is not in control of everything because if you put God in control of everything, you say, okay, it was God that is this. It's God that's allowing this corona. It's God that did this corona. It's God that's allowing planes to fall out of the sky. It's God that's allowing cancer and HIV. That's not God. Come on. Well, what's the simple answer for that? We live in a yes. fallen world. Yes. Let's debunk the second one. If God wanted it to happen, it was going to happen. That's a religious myth also. Whatever God has written in his word, whatever God has said in his word is what it is. But there are some people who are determined to believe God, and then there are other people who are just religious. Well, let me say it again. There are people who are, and I'm going to get to it, who are determined to believe God, and then there are others who are just religiously going on with the program. And they will make every excuse, and they will find every reason, and they will find something wise to say as to why they don't really believe God. The serpent, I'm already in the, in the scripture, is more subtle. The, the sub subtility means that he's crafty, he's cunning. There are many beasts in the field of Genesis chapter 3, verse number 1. And it says, what the Lord God had made. And then he came in that area. He said to the woman, look at how, look at how he, he, he came to the woman. And he goes to the woman and he says, yes, and the Lord, I got to get out of here. So I not eat of every tree of the garden. Now, the very thing that God just told you, you know what God said. You were there for the instruction. You were there 
You know what God said, but then he comes in this area and God said, trying to cast doubt. Has God said? Well, you already know what God said. I need you to understand something. Satan knows what God said too. Yeah. All right. so, Satan knows what God is saying. Are you with me? Yeah. And so he says, and the, and the woman said, we may eat of the fruit. She knows, she knows, of the tree of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God had said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the death was not going to be a physical death, but the death was going to be a separation from God. Somebody say separation from God. It was not going to be the end uh, of their mortal life, as we know that they lived many, many years after this. And the scripture says, and the serpent said unto the woman, Watch this. You should not surely die. This, now, 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 now watch this. Because the expert said, you should not surely die. Mm -hmm. See how he twisted the word? Yeah. What God was speaking of, God was saying, death in the scripture represents separation. God was saying, you're going to be separated. You're going to be separated from me. Right. Satan is saying, no, you're not going to surely die. It's you, you, not going to end your life. Are you with me still? Mm -hmm. Look what he said. Verse 5. Read everybody.
Watch this. Now, I am not responsible. I can't make my wife. I can't make my, as they get up age, you, I can't make them do. I can lead the way. I can lead by example, but I can't force it upon them. Are you listening to what I am saying? But it is my job to lead the way. It is my job to demonstrate structure. It is my job, watch this, and I should be able to say, everywhere I go, anywhere I go, follow me as I follow. But don't just follow me because I'm just a man, and because you're supposed to bow down to me, and let's tell you to know, follow me because I am following Christ. Can I ask you a question this morning? How many men are you following that are not following Christ? How many men do you look up to? How many men do you say, man, that's glamorous. I want his kind of life. I want to have this over there like him. I want to live it up. How many men do you know who are following Christ? Write this down. There is a difference between professing and following. A professor is a religious person, but a follower is a yielded son. A follower will follow the Holy Spirit outside of the four walls. A follower will demonstrate what it means to be submitted unto the Father. Jesus said, I don't even do anything unless the Father teaches me. If the Father does not tell me to do it, then I don't do it. I'm subject unto the Father. I'm going to say one more time and say it slowly. Just out on road with this. You ready for this? There is a difference between a professor and a follower. A professor is a religious person. A professor will name Jesus, talk about Jesus, follow of Christ, this, that, and other. But in their life, you can't find that their life exemplifies it. You can't find, that's this, watch this, you can't find that they are following the Jesus of the scripture. What are you with me? Oh, they're professing. And the first thing somebody going to do is say Jesus. The first thing somebody going to say, oh, they must be followed. No, it doesn't mean they follow it. They be professing. There will be many who are professing who will say, Lord, haven't we cast out devils? Lord, haven't we prophesied? We laid hands on the sick. And he said, I'll never know you why. Because these people were professors. They will never believe us. They were puffed up. They were prideful. They were arrogant in their own self-righteousness. Don't you even understand, no matter how much you read the Bible, no matter how much you pray, no matter how much you give to the poor, no matter how many charitable deeds you do, it does not matter. You are only saved by the blood of Jesus. You are only Walk by the blood of Jesus. You can only have interest into God's kingdom. More than not, the Jesus. You must be born again. You must be born again. You don't just have entered into the kingdom. You must be born into this kingdom by faith. What are you with me? So there's a difference between a professor and a follower of Christ. A follower of Christ will follow his teachings, will follow his word, will be in obedience to his voice. But at this point, Adam was not, stay with me, I'm not lost. At this point, Adam was not following the voice of God. He was following the voice of his wife. Oh. I wonder how many men can be talked into. It can be coerced. I wonder how many men can be seduced into moving away from the voice of God. Oh, see, see, see what happens is when God gives you a word, you have to be firm enough to stand on that word. Come on, Sister Job. Job's wife was talking reckless and crazy. And, and Job, you want to curse God and not. You are crazy. Well, what's wrong with you? If you make up in your mind to stop following Jesus, I'm sorry, I love you, but I got to keep on moving on. Are you listening to what I am saying? I can't be coerced. I can't be talked out of this. That's not a gift that you can give me that can move me, that can soften me down. Are you with me? Instead of him being the leading voice, he became the voice right this now. Came forth to compromise, and anytime you compromise, you lose your strength, you lose your ability, you lose your zenith, you lose the ability to go forward, you lose your thrust when there's a compromise. Anytime you compromise what God said, anytime you soften down, water down what God said to please people, and how bad you feel better now, it doesn't matter how you feel. What God says will stand, and you have to be bold enough to stand on God's word. Don't you understand that God is watching over His word? Watch this now. When a man takes a stand on God's word, all heaven is back in him. The angels are back in him. The Bible says that the angels of the Lord hearken unto the voice of his word. Are you listening to what I'm saying? When a man stands on God's word, I don't care who stands against you, God is standing with you. 
God is more out of his word. God is more out of his covenant. God is not going to hold you in the thing that has come out of his mouth. And so I've been ministering over the past couple of weeks, and I have been saying, and I have been rehearsing and telling them that it's time for us to get back into our rightful place with God. What do you mean by that? I'm talking about it's time for us to live. Some people are saved, but they're living out of alignment. They're not living by the Spirit of God. They're not discerning the times. They're not understanding that men's hearts are failing them for fear of things coming on the earth. They're not understanding and discerning the moment. They're just falling away, just living carelessly, just living with the cares of this world, just caught up with this world system, just focus on just bringing the money home, just focus on making ends meet. God understands all of those things, but watch this now. He said in Matthew 6 and 33, to see ye first the king. You have to make the provider in your life. They're going to be everything they're going to come up with you. They're going to be everything going to come and distract you. I'm kingdom first. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. You know why? Because the dominion, the power is in the, the, the authority, the, the, the glory. Somebody said the favor is contained in the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so this is what happened, church. You ready for this? Same thing then is the same thing now. And history repeats itself. That some of the chaos, this, that a lot of the chaos that we are in in this world is because of the negligence of the church. You better write that down. I'm going to say it one more time. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm going to say it again. I said a lot of the things that are taking place in the world is because the church, is, and watch this, and primarily men in the body of Christ have not been using their authority. Now, I'm not saying that there are some, there are few, there are few. But I'm saying, I'm saying the majority are thrown off. The majority are thinking on other things. The majority have their mindset on things beneath the kingdom. Let me say it one more time. It is our job. We should be policing. We have been given the authority. God has given the authority unto us. Jesus is not going to come out the sky anymore. He has already glory to God. He has given you and me the authority to speak those things that are not as though they are. When I say a man walking in his authority, I don't mean a man being I don't mean a man having big old muscles. I mean a man who understands Jesus, understands Jesus, his character, his person, his nature, his presence. Let me say it again. The world, it was already in a chaotic state. Now, this is after. And what happens in chapter 3 now, you know, you know, Adam is here, and he's supposed to be tending unto certain things. God has given Adam the authority, just as he's given unto you the authority. But Adam right here compromises his authority, and he sends the whole creation. He sends the whole creation into chaos, not only chaos, but into separation from God. Somebody said, this is a problem. But Jesus Christ, being the last Adam, has reconciled us unto the Father, and he has given us our rightful authority. We have been restored. And so what is your job as a new creature in the body of Christ? Your job is to represent, is to do the works of Christ. Christ demonstrated what Adam could not demonstrate. Christ demonstrated what Adam could not demonstrate. Where Adam failed, Jesus had success. And that's why he is called, someone said, the last Adam. Watch this. Go to verse 9, number 15. Let's read verse 14. And the Lord God said to the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, read, y'all. And above every beast of the field. And upon thy belly, read. 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 And I will put in between, between thee and the woman. Read. And between thy seed and her seed. Yes, read. And thou shalt rule to the field. Let's read it slow. I says, and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And there is, there is, there, there is, uh, there is, there is, uh, 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 
woman doesn't have any seed here. Now, this is a uh, messianic prophecy. This is relating to, to Jesus, the Christ. And it says that, that in, in hers, they put imagery between thy seed and the seed. I says, and it shall bruise thy head. And it shall bruise thy head. And so watch this. Watch this. See, what happened was the, the creation and, and the authority was, was, was passed over. Adam compromised, and it was passed over unto him. And so what Jesus had to do, Jesus had to come and restore unto us the authority. Adam forfeited the authority. Jesus gained our authority now. Now we are in the rightful place with God. Somebody say, I'm in the rightful place with God. Right. Jesus bruised him now. You ready for this? And now everything is under. Glory to God. We are the head and not the tail. We are above and not the knee. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And so at Calvary's cross, Jesus bruised his head. Glory to God. The Bible says, I'm getting excited, that the, the, the half of princes of this world knew what they were doing. They would have changed their minds. Shut out, I see. They thought that by killing one man, that they would shut they will shut down his ministry. But by killing one man, Jesus just became the siege of the most high. Except a corner, we fall into the ground and die in the names of law. But if it goes into the ground and germinates, it brings forth much fruit. And now you are a part of the family. Jesus was the seed. Now you are the offspring. Now you are in the family of God. the world. My responsibility is not to be looking up to God because he's not in the sky. God, the anointing is in me. Pastor, I, I heard, I read the book of Daniel. What about when you pray and, and there was something blocking my prayer? Baby, let me tell you something. You read under the old covenant with old covenant eyes. Let me tell you something. Your prayer is not even going up. Shut up. And that's why when a little storm comes, we can't stand for nothing. 
in verse number six, first Peter chapter number five. Can I help you? Can, can I help y'all this morning? Did I give you a revelation? Let me say again, you are not fighting. If the enemy loves to make you think that I'm, I'm just I'm just gonna keep on fighting. No, 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 remember, remember, Jesus, Jesus is my shield of faith. Jesus is my meal yeah. ticket. Jesus is my way maker. Jesus has already accomplished it for me. And so because Jesus accomplished it for me, I already have it. And what Satan wants to do, if he can deceive me through ignorance, if he can mess with my confidence, then, then even though Jesus has paid the price fully. He has paid the price. And I say fully. He has fully paid the price. And he can give me the meal. I don't really know. Maybe God's trying to punish me. I don't know. Maybe this came because, because they done something wrong. It's back pain. It's back pain. It's back pain. Remember, maybe I broke the law somewhere. Maybe I broke it. And so what happens is it has you like a schizophrenic yeah. believer. And so when Jesus deceives you, he can bring you back to your original state. Yeah. 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 Ye
kingdom and not the listen to what I'm saying. The demonstrated kingdom and not the listen. Not to play games. I mean, the church in there swinging from side to side, jumping up the chandeliers. I said, look at this here. Go over come here. No, 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 baby, it's here. No, no, if someone's in need of a miracle, no, no, he said, let the redeem. When you start saying that he is Jehovah Rapha, he will manifest healing. When you start saying he is the Lord that supplied my needs, he will manifest his supply. What is the key? How did you get saved? What did you do when you got saved? How many you get? What did you do when you get saved? What you did? You believe in you what? 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 That's the key. First Peter chapter number five, verse number, I'm messing up, six. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may do what now? Casting all your care upon him, for he does what? Care for you. Verse number eight, read. He's so horrible to you, because you're all going to have 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 to if I twist his story, that is the oldest book of the Bible. If I take that text from the book of Job, then I'll start saying stuff like this. Well, if God, well, if it happened, God must have let him touch me. But sure, that I have see. Under the new covenant, it is not God's responsibility. Under the new covenant, Jesus has already secured you. It is your job to know it. And when you begin to lift up your shield of faith, the enemy has to back down from you. It's no such thing. Don't let it touch you. You let it touch you. See how we keep on throwing responsibility back on God? Wait, I'm saying again. We keep throwing the responsibility. Let me go. Let's read it. Again. Be sober. Be alert. Because read. The adversary, the devil, is a blind lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. Seeking whom he may. It doesn't mean when it's strong, he just walk around and come and do anything they want, and then God let him grab a hold of me. Now, why would I, why would Jesus pay the price? Give you dominion. I be hell saved far as lightning. Why would he give you authority over all the power of the enemy only for him to let the enemy have you at the same time? No, no. I'm debunking what we've been listening to. Yeah. Well, God wants to do what he God knows about everything. He must have let it. No, you let it. He would tell you why would he want Satan to grab a hold of you and then tell you to resist him. Mm -hmm. Verse 9. Read. Who Wait, read. Who resists so let me say. If Satan is trying to grab a hold of your life, if he's trying to inflict you with infirmity, if he's trying to inflict you with oppression, if he's trying to inflict you with disease, God is not saying sit there and because I see it happen, let him go to heaven. He said, no, resist him. Yeah. Amen. I used to watch cops all the time. I've been watching Pluto TV just a little bit a couple of weeks ago when the cake was out. And, I was, and on Pluto TV, they had a whole little thing about cops. You know, they got a whole. And what happens is I've seen, I've seen men over 250 pounds and I've seen a small woman, 125 pounds, and when that woman starts resisting, they cannot grab a hold of her. Stop resisting! <laughs> <laughs> hey, you 260 pound man trying to get this one. <laughs> Stop! Yeah. 
that lie he's telling you, resist it. Don't accept it. Put up your shield. Yes, Lord. Yes. Somebody said, keep your foot on his neck. Watch this. So your job in a new covenant is just the margin. Jesus has won the victory. He's given the victory to you. And now your job, watch this. You know what the police do? The police don't write the laws. Oh, God, I'm going to get redundant. The police don't write the laws. The police enforce the law. Right this second. The police don't write it, but they enforce it. There will be authorities in the earth. Shut that I want to see. If the believer has stopped opening up his mouth to use his authority in the earth, then Satan is going to roll and devour families and devour cities and devour countries and devour nations. He's going to do whatever he wants to do because there is no man to stand up and resist him.
I'm not talking about a preacher from afar off. I'm not talking about somebody you watch on the internet. I'm talking about a close relative. I'm talking about someone in person that's tangible. I'm going to ask you again. Do you know anybody that has the words of the kingdom in their mouth? Do you know anybody who's getting into agreement with the words of the kingdom? Because if we're not getting into agreement with that, guess what? We're getting into agreement with all the foolery that's going on. Yeah. That means that we're living the law of languages. We are condescending to things that are beneath the kingdom. And guess what? And the devil is not the devil's fault. It's your fault. Amen. This is not a replay. What do you mean, Kevin? This is not a replay of what Adam did. You don't stand, glory to God, in the iniquity, the proclivities of the first Adam. You stand, glory to God. You stand in the power and the resurrection of Jesus, the last Adam, who has given you the authority, who has conquered death, hell, and the grave, who has given you the keys of the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Verse number 20 says this, Morgan, for we're two or three. You don't need everybody. But I'm, I'll ask the instruction of you, church. You need to get someone who's speaking the language of the kingdom. Yeah. I am, Brother Trump, I am agitated at the conversation. I don't, I mean, sons are supposed to speak the language of the kingdom. That means when there is a word over here, our word is supposed to be something different. Yeah. We're seen from a higher realm, so we are seen from a higher realm. So I'm not just going to be in agreement because something sounds cute. I'm trying to make you feel good about yourself. Why? Because I know that whatever happens in the earth system, Margie, is not dependent on Jesus. It's dependent on me. Yeah. Yeah. Give God a praise. Yeah. There are so many lives. I'm done. There are so many lies being propagated in the earth today. And it's your job not to go along with the deception. Somebody say, don't go along with it. Somebody say, don't go along with it. Don't just go along with whatever they tell you. praying for all the people of God because I know that you've been going through a season of discouragement. It's been a long, from coronavirus the, the last two years here, it's been a long season. The Bible said in the book of Numbers that the soul of the people were discouraged because of the long journey. I'm praying today that you be revived, that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. I know it's been a while. I know, I know we're living in the last hour. It's an average way. But I want to encourage you. Keep God's word in your mouth. Amen. Amen. I was messing. I was, I was in my own mind one day and I was saying, I guess one day they're going to call Corona and come to an end. All the effects of it. I was talking to the man of God the other day. How can you say that? Can I say that? I said, I said, Coronavirus is Dr. Fauci's baby.
Father, I declare life over your people. I declare that your people will live and they will not die and declare your glory. I decree and declare your people will walk in love and they will walk in discernment. That they will be filled with all the fruits of righteousness. That they will be led by your spirit and by your voice and they will mature as sons and daughters in the earth. I decree it and I declare it and I say that this is our portion in Jesus' name. Somebody give the Lord a big shout of praise.
this story. I thank you that you will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. Lord, whatever the situation is that they're dealing with currently, presently, right now, I thank you that you're moving in that situation. You're manifesting healing. You're manifesting wealth. You're manifesting health. You're manifesting comfort. You're comforting my brother. You're building up my sister. I decree and declare that their life will never be the same. The anointing is flowing right now. The anointing is healing right now. The glory of God is manifesting himself as Jehovah Jireh. He's manifesting himself as Jehovah Nisi. He's manifesting himself as Jehovah Rapha. In your life, in your family, in your job, in your marriage, in your situation, I decree and declare health, wholeness, longevity over the people of God. So as we give, I thank you that you sustain us. I thank you that you increase us. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Somebody shout in Jesus' name. Somebody shout if you sow your seed, we get out of here. Come on, we sow that. You sow we get out of here. Remain, remain standing. Remain standing. We're going to shout and we're going to give him glory. Hallelujah. Say you have rescued my They 
shall live. They shall declare your works. They shall manifest your glory. Let the rest of this day be joyful. Let us remain in your peace and in your love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody shout glory. glory. Somebody shout glory. glory. God bless you. Say you are.